What do Taylor Swift, Kirill Kaprizov, and Kickley Sports have in common? They're masters of their craft. Damie Zatani of the Pioneer Press joins us to break down T-Swift's midnights and the early start to the Minnesota Wild season, followed by local artist Kickley Sports, who has a very special opportunity just for Bar Down Beauty's listeners. As always, we're created by New Voice Studios, presented by Soda Stick, brought to you by Talk North, Grain Belt, and Royal Credit Union. This is Season 4, Episode 147. Get geared up for the hockey season with SodaStick.com. They've got all your favorite player tees from Marc-Andre Fleury to Matt Zuccarello to Ryan Hartman giving you the bird. SodaStick.com has you covered. Not only in just in hockey, though. You got Minnesota Vikings, Minnesota Twins, Minnesota Timberwolves, whatever your Minnesota sports team is, SodaStick has you covered with the best gear available. Don't forget to toss down Bardown Beauties at checkout for 15% off at SodaStick.com. Hello, everybody. We're back. Bar Down Beauties, episode 147. Joining me, Jesse Pierce, and her, Kirsten Kroll, and producer Fred, Dane Mizutani of the St. Paul Pioneer Press. Now, you guys are probably thinking, hey, let's just dive in and talk about how the Minnesota Wild won their first game. Let's dive in and talk about how they're going to hit the road. We'll get to that. We will get to that. However, I got a very curious text from Dane saying, hey, I didn't know Kirsten was a Swifty. And these two are crazy Taylor Swift people. I wanted to tap into my Taylor Swifters out there. Do we call them Swifters? Or are they just Swifties? They're Swifties. Okay. Let's get that well, right, Jesse. Yeah. So she released a new album last night called Midnight. Midnights. Midnights. That's what I got. Like I said, th- I was telling you guys, there is literally nothing that I would stay up for until like three in the morning, except maybe like triple overtime of game seven of a Stanley Cup. Because Jesse is passionate about nothing. Zing, zing. So, anyways, uh, go go off on on T Swift. Was it good? It, it literally. I'm gonna start this off because I I don't know if you saw my Instagram recap that I did on it, but this is by far her best album yet. I truly believe. This I feel is like you guys say and people say that every album. Albums. She because she keeps getting better every single time. Like Jesse, I'm assuming you haven't listened to it, so now I can flip the cards on you. You need to listen to it right away this like- album is literally the best thing she's ever put out <laughs> watching mighty ducks and listening to a new taylor swift album are two different things i i started listening no. to the lana del rey one because i like lana del rey yeah you she's barely on that she just kind of is, is like a backup vocalist on that but that song is a vibe too like so i good. i do think i i I don't know if I'd go as far as saying it's her best yet, Kirsten. I'm just not ready. Like, I don't know. Like, I, I need some more time with the album. How but... many full listen throughs have you done? I've listened to it four times fully through. Five. Okay, so... five. Good she Lord, can't people. sit and watch a movie, but she can listen to a song. On yes. I need to memorize all the lyrics and really take them in. Dane, what's your favorite song off Midnight's? Maroon. And oh, I, I don't know, like, it's like the first time I listen to a Taylor Swift album, it's always just like first time through just vibes, no lyrics. I don't care like what she's saying. I just care like how the song sounds, if I like it or not. Um, if I, if it makes me feel a certain way, if certain lyrics pop out, then like, that's obviously like, those are my lyrics. Cause I'm not even listening for them. Maroon was just so good. Like, and so it was good. like sad, but like in, in a, in a way that was like still very, very like captivating. I don't know. Like anyone who's not a Swifty is going to just probably roll their eyes at all this, like (laughs) this, like assessment, but like there's something about Taylor Swift. And now that she's working with Jack Antonoff, like you can take like a sad song and make it like very, like still a bop. And it's like, sounds big. And even though it is very like introspective, it's like, that's, that's what I felt from, from Maroon. And, and listening to this album, I don't know if you felt the same way, Dane, but I was so Fred's happy. Fred's literally leaving the room. <laughs> Fred doesn't care at all. <laughs> Whatever. It's fine. We got important matters to discuss. During this album, I not only felt so happy, was so filled with joy, but I wanted to bawl my eyes out all at the same time. Did you feel yeah. that way? Uh, it it hit for sure. Like there was definitely like different parts of the album that hit like in different like ways like I thought it was interesting like she talked about like how this album was going to be like super introspective like based on 
13 songs based on 13 sleepless nights throughout her life. Like, so she's kind of gotten back to writing about herself very autobiographically, whereas like in the past, you know, folklore evermore, she was kind of writing about others, like kind of allowing herself to go down that route of creativity. But like, this was all about her. So like, yeah, like you, you could feel like when she was really sad, you can feel moments when she was in love. You can feel moments when all she wants to do is get revenge. Like, I think she dropped that little tease on 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 spotify as like the album drop talking about like what's kept her up at night throughout her career and i think i I don't know them all i think one was like seeking revenge one was falling in love one was falling apart and you you get all of that like in this album so jesse you need to listen to it like honestly i don't and i i I should preface this i don't like hate taylor swift like i i certainly listen to like i be careful because the swifties will come for you i don't like I just am not as upset. Like I, I liked her when I was a little bit younger, right? Like fairy t- or uh love story. I loved that song. Yeah, I know. Like I liked all the like poppy ones, I think. Right. Like <clears throat> I just, I don't know. I'm not all like, I feel like with her, sometimes you have to be one or the other and I'm not like, I'm not a full Swifty. I'm not like, I don't hate her. I just, I'm kind of, she's, she's good. She's musically talented and stuff. Mm-hmm. You uh, don't have to pick one or the other. It just happens. You just fall into uh, it. Does it? I mean, I do it. love all too well the ten minute version. Like I do. I can yes. on repeat. Okay. Like I can. I can do that. I got on board with that whole thing. Um, I will listen Add to Girl it. Autumn. I get it. Yeah. Right. Like I will. I will listen to it. Um, would you know just to tie it back into sports? You know, for a minute on a Bard on Beauty's hockey podcast. <laughs> is there? A- <laughs> I want to let you guys get this out of your system because I feel like you neither of you have an outlet to do so. So here this you go. It. This is it. Uh, I'll tie it into sports the best way I can. Um, is there a song like Bad Blood or one that you could play at a rink? Is there any? Are there? Or is this all very somber? Very like? No, this isn't really for athletic adventures. The only song I could think of, and forgive me, it is the name of a title track vigilante shit it's about revenge like i could see that kind of bumping at a wild game a little bit yeah i would say that song describes how the wild played in their first win of the season last night overtime against vancouver so i mean yeah that song that song yeah that was beautiful uh dane you're looking at me like that is the stupidest thing you've ever heard and no we'll just leave it at that like there aren't a lot of bops on this like there are in in a way that is like it, it makes you feel really good but yeah. like, there's not a lot of earworm like radio hits like yeah. on this album, and I think that was pretty intentional. I think she's kind of started to go away from. She's that. over that, yeah. But like vigilante shit, like is like something that like if it's tense, it, it's like a very very tense song. So I, that that could play. That could play. All right, you know, Dane, you're around the Minnesota Wild almost as often as Kirsten and I. Have you asked any of the guys if they're Swifties? I'm trying to think of like who might be a Swifty on the team. Definitely not Dumba, even though he's our music guy. I feel like Ryan Hartman could be a Swifty. Like Jordan Greenway could be a Swifty, oh, like Greenway a low key Swifty. I yeah. I would almost guarantee Matt Boldy is a Swifty. Like he's in that generation. You know, I like thought that. about that too, but he doesn't like PSLs, so he probably doesn't like Taylor Swift. PSLs got one right now. So. <laughs> Just really le- leaning into the fall, Jesse. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Huh. Uh, yeah, no, I'm sure Kirsten's saying something really intelligent, but I can't hear. Yeah, <laughs> I can't hear either. Hold on. Yeah. I did there... Jason Jost over the summer at Beauty League. Yes. I asked him what his favorite Taylor Swift song was. He answered 22. Um, I don't know if he just said that because it's the only one he knows. Yeah. But... I mean, this is the kind of investigative reporting I want in the Pioneer Press. These are the things that people want to know, need to know. You should I, I'll go ask him. I mean, I'm we'll be on. I'll be in Boston. I leave. I leave in like two hours. So yeah. like, I will. Uh, we'll Good. go peruse the locker room. They they did win yesterday, so they'll probably be in a little bit better mood. Like, yeah. if I'm asking them about if they are Swifty yet, while they're I want on a full article on what their favorite song is. <laughs> <laughs> or like what song describes each player yeah That's which we talked about like if we did teams it's gonna be too difficult we'll get back to it we'll circle back later on in the year i'll give you guys the enough toronto time. maple leafs would be all too well 10 minute version i have decided <laughs> i mean i like so that. tragic yeah so tragic <laughs> just poor toronto you know speaking of hockey let's let's do it let's continue with the hockey count do you guys feel good is it out of your system yeah um fine. 
there's going to be references that work their way and I'm sorry this is my personality for the foreseeable future <laughs> that's fair uh Kirsten you had mentioned in Minnesota getting their first win obviously we're recording on this on a Friday so that win is very fresh over the Vancouver Canucks but now they hit the road now guys I the first win it feels great right we all Dane the players have told us how nice it feels that they're like happy again jovial yada yada um my bigger concern is wasn't necessarily just how they played it was that they gathered all these losses at home a place that has been so sacred to them so so, and you could say that about every home rink, but truly the XL Energy Center is a place that they very rarely ever lose, right? Don't think about those playoffs last year. Um, but is that more concerning to you as they hit this road trip? Or do you think it's good that they did get that win finally at home and now they're going to carry that over into this lengthy road trip uh, starting in Boston Saturday? I think it's good they got a win. Because like yeah. if you're 0-4 heading, staring down like a five-game, 10-day road trip, like that's a tough task. Like, they're one and three, so it's not that much better. But like, mm-hmm. you could, you're right. Like, they are a group that, for the past couple of years, really since they got rid of Zach Fries and Ryan Suter, I don't want to like drag them through the mud too much. But say. like, <laughs> since like since they got rid of those two guys, like the locker room has changed, and yeah. it's been like they've talked a lot about culture. They really seem to be enjoying each other's company at all times. Like they vibe in the locker room constantly. And that wasn't there for like the last week and a half. Like every time you walk in, it was like, you know, everyone was down. Everyone was tight, like gripping their stick tights. Flurry couldn't stop a puck. Gustafson's letting like fluky bounces into the back of the net. Like everything was going wrong. So I feel like the fact that they got this win, whether the fact they they dropped three home games before that, like this, this was always whatever win was going to be their first was going to be the most important. But mm-hmm. I think it was like incumbent. They got this like before they got up onto the road, because yeah. if you are on four, you've just dropped four straight games at home. You're going into Boston. Like they're good. Like then you're on five, maybe then you're like tight against Montreal and Ottawa. Cause you should beat those teams. But if you're on five, like you can't have too much confidence. So mm-hmm. yeah, I think this, this win probably allows them to, to at least loosen up a little bit and kind of push forward towards the rest of their season. You mentioned Mark Andre Fleury and y'all know how much I love talking goaltending and, and it was, it was very apparent. I'm not, th- I'm going to be nice. Kirsten, quit rolling your are eyes. I'm you, gonna be nice. I'm gonna be nice. Jesse? Yeah, I, yeah. I don't believe you. I really enjoyed Mark Andre Fleury's play in that victory against Vancouver. I would say he stole them that game a little bit. He kept them in it. He made some vintage Mark Andre Andre Fleury saves uh, when the defense looked atrocious. I haven't seen the defense play that poorly in quite some time. But Jesse's uh, animosity for goaltending has switched over fully to the defense now. <laughs> it has. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. I'll make my way up the lines. I'll just go, I'll start goalie, then defense sucks, and then offense will suck too. So whatever. Someone's got to be critical. Um, no, but I think, I mean, do you think that Mark Andre Fleury, you're gonna get this Mark Andre Fleury the majority of games? You're obviously not gonna get it every game, but do you think that's the type of goaltending we will be seeing from him from now now on out? Yeah, I mean, I I don't know. Like I think he's <laughs> he's someone who he's gonna be 38 next month. Like he might just have gotten old. Like he's always one with his athleticism. Watch your and tongue with age. Damn. Hey, I'm 30 now. I got lower back problems. Um, <laughs> you and Devin Dubnik. <laughs> uh, yeah. Hey, it was good to see Doobie. Yeah. Um, he's looking good. So I uh, just like, I don't know, like sometimes guys, it, you see it in sports, like across sports. And I think we've been spoiled with like Tom Brady and LeBron James. Like those dudes just have never gotten old. And we're starting to see Tom Brady get old. And it's I'm weird. tired of him anyways, carry on. Sorry. <laughs> All right. Well, he's, he, he does appear to be aging out at some point. Um, but you see these guys who have been like a pinnacle of success, like into Tom Brady's like 45 LeBron's going to be 40 and he's still dominating. Like it's not abnormal for guys. Once they start, you know, get past 35 to, to decline. And flurry was kind of like in that same vein of Tom Brady, LeBron James, cause he won the Vesna like two years ago. Uh, but you think about how flurry's won throughout his career. Like, he's not a prototypical goaltender like of present day where like everything is efficient and the movements are very, very calculated. And like, if the shooter is here, I'm there. And like Fleur is just sprawling around the crease, like reacting, uh, diving, flailing, whatever, make the save by any means necessary. Mm -hmm. But like when 
you get maybe a touch slower than, than you've been throughout your career, your reaction time slips a bit. I think you're going to see things like, like we saw through the first two games. Like, I don't think he's allowing six at night, like seven at night. Like, but I, I don't know if he's someone who the wild can just rely on to, to steal them a game every single night, night in, night out. That, that's that's mm-hmm. why going back to your, your disdain for the defense, Jesse, like they have to, they have to tighten up because yeah. like flurry allowed three last night, two of them, he had absolutely no chance on. Um, and, and I would argue the third one too. Like, it's just like, there's too many times this season and we're only four games in, but guys are just getting behind the enemy lines and like just people are skating right past mm-hmm. a Matt Dumba or Ryan Hartman. And it's just like the, the, the ability and, and commitment in the defensive zone has been lacking this year. And unless that improves, like, I don't think it really matters how good flurry is. Hmm. All right. I don't, I don't disagree entirely, I guess. Um Yeah. Do we have faith in Gustav Gustafson? Have we even figured out how to say that? Gustafson. Gus. I think it's Gustafson. Gustafson. Well, we know Jesse doesn't. We know that for certain. I mean, I I'm you curious. You called him an AHL goaltender at best. Thank you for listening to that breakdown. Uh or preview. <laughs> I mean, he is. Like, because you know he's gonna have to play more games. Again, I think if you saw Marc Andre Fleury getting benched this early on and granted again he he had his struggles because the defense struggled is Gus a viable option and now looking back on that one for one for Talbot was that a wise move in your opinion was it wise I don't think they were ever going to get like even money on the dollar with that one I think Cam had the way he was treated in the playoffs last year I think Flurry getting a two-year deal and Cam only had a one year left on his deal like that soured cam on the organization. Um, I think that relationship was pretty irreparable at that point. So mm-hmm. no, it wasn't even trade. Cam Talbot's a better goaltender than, than Philip Gustafson. Um, I, I don't have a ton of confidence in him right now. It's going to take some time. Like for me personally to believe he can be a backup in this league, but I think for his teammates too. And like, they're going to say all the right things, but like those goals against Colorado, the wild were the better team. They, they were much better than the Stanley cup champions that night. And, and they weren't in, at the end of the day because Philip Gustafson allowed so many soft goals. Mm-hmm. Um, you can say what you want about a fluky bounce here or there. Like they were bad. some of these bleeders, yeah, these bleeders through like the backhanding shots that are, that are just getting through are like pretty unacceptable for an NHL goaltender. So like, I think he has potential. I think you see him make pretty impressive, incredible saves, but then allow the soft one. So if he can get, like that consistency on track. Like I, I don't think the wild need him to start 50 games this year, 40 games this year. It's not going to be an even 50, sure. 50 split. Like if, if you can get 20 solid games out of him, like, I think that's enough. Um, but I guess we'll see here. Like he's going to have to play on this road trip. Um, I don't know. I mean, I'm sure he'll get one game maybe of the five. Um, mm-hmm. and, and so I'll be interested to see how he responds. Yeah, I, w- I would agree. Now that they have this win out of their way, Dane. And, and as you mentioned, you'll be heading to Boston <laughs> And then they've got a lengthy road trip before they get back here to XL Energy Center. Have they fixed the number of kind of, I don't want to say problems because problems makes them sound ginormous, but <clears throat> the number of issues that we saw in those losses, do you think they fixed them enough to get some wins, get some to get two points on the road uh, for the next week here? I think like we're probably going to see like little blips here and there, like throughout the next week and a half. Like, I don't think everything's just going to be clean. Like in they Boston. They will lose and, a game again is what you're saying. Yes. Yes. Yeah. And, okay. but I, I think like Dean Evison's quote last night, like was pretty like spot on. Um, and he talked a lot about composure, but asked like towards the end of his press conference, if like this was the end of that lack of composure, he said, yeah, I think it's over. And then he like kind of backtracked a little bit. He was like, well, I think we're going to see some issues here and there, but I think like, the lack of confidence led to a lack of composure like over Mm -hmm. the past week. So I think getting that first win um, should allow them to just inherently be more, a little bit relaxed on the ice, which then in turn should allow them to be a little bit more inherently composed on the ice. Um, Because a lot of the mistakes they were making through the first week of the season, like a lot of the guys making those mistakes are guys you expect to be like at the top of their game, top level Mm -hmm. players on this team. And, and, they were struggling. So like, I don't think all the problems are fixed, 
Um, but I think you will see a better hockey team the next 10 days. Now, I don't know if you guys felt this way too, but even once Kaprizov netted that overtime winner last night and all of the teammates came off the bench, just hockey hugs coming back, it felt literally, quite literally, like a weight was lifted in the XL Energy Center. And I feel like that you could see that shift on the ice too once that happened. Yeah, I, th- I thought so. Like, I thought it was like you saw him kind of like, pump his fist and scream and slam the glass. Like it was like a cathartic release mm-hmm. like of, of Caprice out there. And then his teammates crowding around him. Like that was the first time they, that this team has really felt joy like this whole season. So like, I, yeah, I totally agree with you. So like, summer, it really is the first like, time they felt joy. No, yeah. Joy. Like they were very much in their sad girl autumn vibes up until that moment last night. Truly. I think for sure. So it, it's like, Maybe it, it would have been better if they lost, honestly. They all could have gone and popped in like Taylor Swift and, and just kind of vibed out. Like That's what road. I was ready to do. I told Jesse I was going to listen to all too well 10-minute version on my drive home and just cry. That's what I was going to do. Yeah. But we didn't have to. We didn't have to. <laughs> Full Dean Everson gets them all on the charter and says, everyone, you're all, we're rolling four. Put your headphones in. Everyone push play at the same time. We're listening to this Taylor Swift. So. Yes. No, they don't have to do that. They, I mean, like, they, they got the win. I think you're right, though, Kirsten. Like, it's just, like, it felt like a weight was lifted. And you felt that in the locker room. Like, Marc-Andre Fleury has been doing this for a long, long, long time. And he is – we've covered some really good goaltenders, Jesse, like, in our time on, on the beat. Like, we don't have, like, a lot of the weird goaltender stereotype of, like, this no. guy is just, like, super unpleasant to be around. But, like yeah. – Flurry is like among the most accountable guys I've ever heard. Like yeah. as far as a goaltender accepting like fault and, right. and, and wearing the blame. And I'm getting back to like the fact that the weight was lifted. Like you saw him after the game last night, just take like 10 deep breaths. And I think it was like, yeah, he was probably tired. They just played like an overtime <laughs> game, but I think a lot of it was like, Holy crap. Like, thank God we finally got a win because right. like I can't keep doing this. Um, so I, I, yeah, I mean, the vibes are better. Um, will that translate to a win on Saturday? I, I'm not sure. But like I said, I, I, I do think this team will be will look more like the wild team that we, we saw last year than the wild team that we saw last week. Hopefully that is true. Again, Dame Zatani of St. Paul Pioneer Press. Check out all of his work over on the Pioneer Press. Follow him on Twitter if you so dare. He's pretty good. Um, yeah, thanks for joining us to talk T Swift for all those Swifties out there and a little Minnesota Wild. Dane, we appreciate you always, buddy. Anytime, literally Any- anytime. <laughs> literally, see, do you have passion? Do you have anything else going on? That's just it, Dane. No, Taylor Swift <laughs> is the is the passion for the rest of the. Uh, I, I, as soon as I, I log off this Zoom, I'm gonna call a lift and then I'm gonna speak to nobody until I get to Boston because I'm just gonna listen to Taylor Swift. For the next however many hours it takes. Um, and now I think you've got seven more deluxe tracks. Too. Exactly. Michael Russo's on my flight. I don't think I'll say a word to him. I'll be like, That's, okay, hold on. You know, just yeah. leave me alone. I'm in you my have other I'm priorities. In... Yeah, mm-hmm. exactly. So I love it. Love that for you. Congratulations on that life that you're choosing to uh to live. I'm proud of you. Jesse's jealous. She is. I am. I'm gonna probably go golfing, so it's fine. <laughs> I'll, <laughs> like, I'll live. Uh, that's gonna do it for our first segment. When we come back, Kickley, local Minnesota artist who you've seen at all of the Minnesota sporting events, will join us. We're gonna take a quick break. We'll be right back. We're back. Joining us now, a guy that you are probably have seen at a number of live Minnesota sporting events, local artist Kickley. Kickley, what's going on? I'm so excited to have you. I'm happy to be here. Yeah, <laughs> you reached out, I think, last year, and it just didn't work out, I think. And here we are. So. You're busy. You're a busy, busy man. So again, if yeah. folks haven't seen your work, tell everybody a little bit about what you do. I mean, it's it's pretty amazing what you do, frankly. But uh, for those that aren't familiar, share with them uh, your exploits. Yeah, it actually started last year. So me and my co- me and my uh, family got COVID, and uh, I you know I was in a car accident about seven years ago. So the COVID that I got was more like aches and pains, and it just reactivated the aches and pains from the car accident and for two weeks you know like I laid on the couch and I was like oh this sucks and uh um my brother who had season tickets 
uh, he it was right at the last year, the Wild, when they were home for like a 10 game home stretch. And he was like, I can't find people during the week to come. Yeah. Do you want to come to some of these games? And so I was like, sure, I want to get out of my house. You know, I was feeling a little bit better. So I brought my sketchbook for the first game. And I started sketching and it was just like, this is what I want to do. I want to be, you know, because after my car accident, I went to Paris to re rehabilitate me drawing again after like a long period of time of not drawing. And it felt like, you know, the energy there with the goal and the music and all that stuff. And, you know, pe you know, just drawing people and the people around me and everything was like, this is, this is what I want to do. So it, the next game then, <laughs> since he had 10 games, I was like, I want to go to every one of these. <laughs> and I brought my paints the next game. Cause I was like, I want to see if I can paint, you know, mm -hmm. I, I drawing, drawing was easy. So it was like, I want to try and up the difficulty. So I started painting and people around me were just like, what the heck are you doing? You know, like, a why what, you know and I'm just like I, I can't talk to you you know it's it's normally the thing like last night uh fan you know somebody saw me because now I'm kind of getting well enough known that I have to kind of hide <laughs> because sure. everyone every you know and I don't you know I don't care if you find me you talk to me you know some people too like uh Chris Long from uh yeah. from uh K KSTP uh Channel 5 Sports he watched me during a whole twins game and he was afraid to come up to me and say hi because he was like, I don't want to bug you. And I yeah. was like, what are you talking about? Just come up and say hi. Right. Now it's to the point where every, I, you know, I don't want to feel bad of, I, I can't talk to you. I really, I have to concentrate here and give this play yeah. because it's all by memory. Right. And I have to look at the play and burn it into my head to be able to then uh, get it because I, I I've been saying lately uh, I'm telling people like there's that scene in Back to the Future one where he's playing the guitar and his family's disappearing in the photograph mm -hmm. that's what it's like w how I work in my mind it's like I try and remember the most important things and then everything slowly starts to fade away and it's like if I don't get it down or notes down to begin with it's just you know yeah. it's a uh, you know, like last night, you know, here's the game winner. Amazing. You that know, is, and then, that's okay. just all from memory. Like, that's what's yeah. fascinating. And to this me. is uh, Zuccarillo's uh, two goal night. Oh my God. You know, where that's his first one. And that's the one where he tie, uh, tied it up. So it's just, you know, and a lot of the times it's like, you know, if they have more than two or three goals, it's really hard to keep up especially with hockey I, you know like I, I oopsed into this I guess I wasn't planning on doing this it just was more of a challenge and my energy was way up because of how the crowd was last year especially where where um you know we're going we're going into the playoffs we're having a great yeah. year everybody's like going nuts so at these games so it's just like oh, I was feeling me doing this and and uh, it was getting me out of the house, you know, yeah. and I was, I was feeling good because normally I work in my studio um, uh, and it's just, you know, I spend 12 hours a day in my studio alone mm -hmm. and this allows me to get out and kind of interact with people and stuff. But like I was saying, like last night, this guy came up to me and was like talking to me and everything. And I was, you know, cause he kind of found me. I kind of, I, yeah. I'm understanding the the stadiums enough where my little nooks and crannies are. Mm -hmm. And I try and, you know, like last year, because the news channels would cover me and and, uh, and they would like do these things where they would uh, take my painting and then integrate it, crossfade it into like a clip. And it was really right. weird to me because I'm like, that's really odd because I, I kind of think like that's the best I can do. I I, I got close, you yeah. know, I can yeah. fake it kind of at a certain point, especially <clears throat> if I know who the players are and get comfortable with who they are. And, you know, this year, a little bit, there's the team's a little bit different mm -hmm. from last year. So it's kind of like uh, understanding and, you know, they've been kind of messing with the lines a little bit, you know? Yeah. So it's just right. like uh, it, once that kind of solidifies, then it's like, oh, okay, I, I know the team and I know who who's where, 
you know, every once in a while a player kind of be out of position and stuff like that. But, right. um, you know, it is what it is. Normally I, I say when, when I don't have numbers on players that it's just like, that's just a vague player. I have, I, I yeah. just couldn't remember, you know? And, <laughs> and so there's stuff like that where, you know, again, it's fun. It's stressful mm-hmm. during the moment because again, I have to see something like that last goal last night. I saw it and I literally just kind of burned it in my head. And I'm like, I went somewhere else to paint it just to mm-hmm. sit down to be alone because yeah. I knew like, I, I can't be interrupted on this right. at all. There's, and, there's just so much I want to digest here. Uh, yeah. Namely bringing paints and a canvas into the X, right? Like yeah. I was going to ask well, that too. What yeah. did security They're, say the first time you did they, that? They, yeah. Well, I, you know, again, everybody asked me that. Everyone asked me there, like, how did you get the stuff in here? You know, <laughs> yeah. um, and again, it's me. I've built a reputation now where people know who I am when I come to the gate. They're like, oh my gosh. Yeah. I'm a huge right fan. Right this you know, way, like, sir. Right, right this yeah, way. No, it is. <laughs> it is it's uh it's I laugh because it's almost like a red carpet treatment of like you know people get nervous when they see me and I'm like this is weird you know like (laughs) they they I don't think anything of it because again I'm in the trenches and I'm trying to do this and I kind of almost you know I didn't I just posted the double goal one just now Mm -hmm. it's it's all this balancing act of like learning how to do it you know I want to be respectful to the teams and uh to the players um you know and to the fans you know it's yeah. it's it, it, it's not hard to do that but it's like i get frustrated and um disappointed too when they lose you know and it's just like ah uh, you know and again it's like i want them to win i you know i i don't really like other teams competitively you know like Mm -hmm. you know it's it's I respect the teams and the players and what they're doing but still I want my team to win so it's just like uh so there's all this stuff going on so I when when things where people come up to me and like you're famous or you're you know I've seen you on the news whatever and it's just like it's just me in my head it's just like I'm just trying to do this thing part of me feels you know like it's not that I fail it's just more like it's not, I could do better, you know? Sure. I'm, I'm constantly trying to do better and trying to up, up my game because in a sense, this is my sport. Yeah. You know, I, I grew that. up playing sports and, you know, then it transitioned to watching sports. And now it's kind of, I'm doing this and it, it feels, it feels athletic in a weird way. Cause I'm exhausted by the end of the night. It's like, right. you know, and now, now doing like you know the vikings officially and then you know all of the gophers <laughs> you know mm-hmm. and and whatever else so i'm go- going into high school you know you know all these teams like you know teams across country have asked me to come and do the same thing for them oh wow you know? i've just yeah. i've just i've just said no because i'm like I, it would be cool and maybe at some point like the mlb next year will be different for me because mm-hmm. i'm going to be covering it all so, awesome. so are teams and em- are teams employing you then or like because you yeah, had said vikings, this started okay the vikings made it official yeah nice i'm getting i'm you know i'm officially <clears throat> the minnesota vikings official uh resident and artist uh for the season so yeah congratulations yeah. Mm, thank you and what it's a pretty good season to cover for the minnesota vikings too right? yeah no they're doing great <laughs> you know um you know if you make it official with me maybe you know maybe i'll yeah. bring you good luck so, but again like other nfl teams have reached out to me and it's just like no i you know <laughs> the vikings yeah. are my team right i don't, I don't care about really your want... team like i do about yeah, uh, <laughs> yeah you know mine. come playoff come playoff time it's a little bit different especially if your team's not in it then it's like well i still want to watch it you know so mm-hmm. it's like baseball it's just like i miss painting baseball and you know so it's just you know but i i'm again i'm so busy that it's just you know, I want to do it, but then it's just at the end of the day, I'm like, I'm just too tired. I got to save my energy for the game that's coming up. So, right. yeah, I can imagine. And, you know, I have one question too, that I've been wondering as you've been talking about this, first and foremost, I want to say your work's incredible. I'm 
when you were showing the pictures that you just did from the wild game, they were so good. Um, when, when you're doing this, how long does it take you to complete each one? Um, like I tell people, I don't really time myself. I I'm trying again, I'm fighting against my own, my own consciousness or memory of, uh, trying to get it down. And mm -hmm. I try and be as quick as possible, especially with, with hockey, like goal, you know, like, there was one game last year in the playoffs where I think the wild scored like six goals and I that got used them to be all. a theme for them, not six goals yeah. against it used to be yeah, yeah, yeah. the thing they did. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no. And again, it's, it's, you know, it's hard because it's like, like stuff like that. It's like, yeah, I kind of want to want to document that stuff too, where it's like that that's, that's been my whole thing of like, do I, do I just paint the positive things or do I paint, the thing because to me it's like what I want to do is I want to capture the you know the Greek comedy in a sense like the you know because Minnesota is is a Greek comedy in sports <laughs> right it's like yeah. we have high hopes we have like and then it's just like hard crash down and it's like oh man like last year you know I painted that one because uh, the last playoff game um I painted the the uh, office uh the chili spill right oh, yeah, of, uh, yeah you know and that blew up but it was just I was sitting there waiting for a goal and I'm like really this is what it's going to come down to I think wow well, I think it was like six goals against that one right I, mm -hmm. you know against one I think we scored one I think uh um I can't remember who scored the final goal for us um, probably Caprice off yeah. no it wasn't Caprice <laughs> off it was uh I, I forget um but you know it just I was just sitting there waiting and it was like, you know, I, I, for some reason that kind of clip from the office came into my head of like, you know, and I watched it a few times because I'm like, I don't really want to dunk on the team, yeah. but as a fan, like I know how I feel and I know how everyone else is going to feel. So I was just like, well, I'll just do it. And then I did it. And then I was like, I don't know if I should post this. It's really good. I don't know <laughs> if I should post it because I don't, you know, because there was a few players that reached out to me and I was kind of chatting back and forth to last year. And it was like, I don't want to make it feel like, you know, I'm I'm slamming those guys or whatever. But right. I'm like, I just kind of took uh, I was like, nah, I'll just put it out there. It's a, it, it's it a probably... gentle jab, you know, I yeah. feel like Kirsten and I do it enough times, too. Like, I still yeah, love them. It's nothing personal, yeah. but <laughs> and that's kind of what I was thinking, too. And it was like, you know. I guess I'm more kind of coming from that angle or, or trying to to think like how to be because again I don't want to be rah 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 mm -hmm. all the time especially if bad things happen which they normally do <laughs> and you know should I cover them as long as it's not making fun I, you know it's making fun but it's not making fun of right it's not because when I did that you know the the character from the office is named Kevin and so everyone was like how come you didn't put Kevin Fiala's number on there and I was like no that's just I wasn't doing that you know, yeah. I wasn't trying to slam him or anybody else on the right. team. I, I put double zero, I think, on it. Yeah. But yeah, that that blew up. And I'm like, oh, great. This is the one that really blows up. So. What do you do? I mean, obviously, you post uh, post them on social media. What mm -hmm. do you do with the actual paintings? I mean, if the Vikings are paying you, do you give those over to the Vikings or in general? Like what? Just... You see that stack yeah. there? Yeah. That's mm -hmm. from the last few months of me painting. So oh there's probably gosh. like, I don't know, 400 paintings there. So, and That's I've got cool. another stack over here and another stack on the floor right here. So it's just, you know, this is, this is just from the wild season so far, yeah. you know, if I've people were to like, want to like purchase, I mean, or is there something that you're going to sell or right now? Is it like, Nope, this is my passion. This is what I'm doing kind of for me and, and, and my artistry. Is that something that you want to get into or something you'd ever consider or right yeah, now? No, things are being set up. Like I tested some things last year because I had so many people being like, Hey, I want to buy that. But then when yeah. it's like, well, this is an original in-game painting, right? It's like right. in kind of my rookie season. And it's like, well, it's, you know, it's this much, like I have prices on my website site mm -hmm. stuff, but people always are like, oh, well, I wasn't expecting that. And I'm like, well, it's original painting. What, yeah. did, what did you expect? You know, like a print is what they're thinking. Five, right? Yeah. $500 for a starting point for, uh, for a painting, you know, just as a commission is, you know, it's not that expensive when you think about it. It's mm -hmm. like, it's my time and my experience for over 40 right. years of, 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 uh, you know, trying to master the arts in a sense, mm -hmm. it's like, that's what you're getting. 
So, yeah. but yeah, people kind of want more prints, right? They just like the image and they're like, I just, I just want, I want that. So I'm, I'm trying to figure out um, a way. Cause you know, I did these, these uh, print packs last year and this, like, this was the playoffs, oh, you yeah. know, that's, you know, and then this was the regular season, you know, which uh, <laughs> has a nice that's middle, middle, middle yeah. finger. <laughs> yeah. So, and you know, I was thinking too, it's like, you know, I have a few of these left you know, mm-hmm. two left. And so mm-hmm. maybe we can give them away uh, through yeah. your podcast uh, to, your, oh. to your listeners and stuff. If what they do you guys follow think? Me. Yeah. yeah, follow me on my social medias and uh, like a post or comment yeah. on a post, you know, saying like, I want the print pack or something. And, I uh, you know, I have, I have one for Twitter and one for Instagram. So if you guys want to follow me there, you know, I'll give them to your to your listeners uh, exclusively so you guys heard but, heard it here first you go get your pack make sure you follow kickly uh we could we'll obviously put it up on social but for those that are listening what are your social handles that they can jet on over there yeah it's kick uh, at kickly sports both uh instagram and twitter so kickly is kick and then l-i-y sports kickly sports awesome so. i imagine that people are going to be running to their computers <laughs> and, and phones yeah. for that because they do i mean it is like you and I started conversing last year because I do. I think what you do is absolutely amazing, especially to do it in game. And you had mentioned, obviously, hockey. It's so quick. We all know it. All yeah. of us that watch and analyze it. Is hockey the toughest sport for you to cover and, get, and capture those moments? Yeah. Like looking back, you know, again, I oopsed into it, but it was the best one to start with because it's so hard. Yeah. And then going from that to baseball, baseball was like, oh, that's a piece of cake. <laughs> right. Only two people, only two people move really in the game, the pitcher and the batter, if that, yeah. you know, and everybody comes back to a set position, which it's, it's pretty simple. Um, but, you know, football is different in a sense, you know, it, it kind of has elements of hockey, but again, they come back to a set position. So it all stems down to three, the, everything is three second plays, mm-hmm. right? you know, it's three seconds for something to happen. I've timed it, you know, I've, you know, mentally timed it. So yeah. it's just like, I'm having to do something in three seconds. And, you know, people have called me speed painter or whatever, and this and that. And it's like, well, how, how fast do you want me to be to do a three second painting? You know, to, to me, these are studies, you know, I'm, I've been working like, again, in my studio on, on bigger final pieces, which mm-hmm. I think w- I'll have like, a gallery at some point, you know, oh, yeah. and um, be able to show the difference between what an in-game painting is to something that, you know, I work, you know, weeks to months on. So, right. So do you have, you I mean, I have to imagine you have a photographic memory. You had referenced the uh, Back to the Future, which I'm sure Kirsten's never seen because she, I haven't. And, I, yeah. yeah. No, oh, yeah. We don't need no. to get into that. Wow. You need, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Well, yeah. photographic, I don't know. Like, I don't have, I know I don't have a photographic memory. Like, there's certain, you know, it's it, because again, it, it's all vague. It becomes very vague quick. Mm-hmm. So, to me, a photographic memory is I can see it and I never forget it, right? It's not sure. that way. Um, I did the YouTube game of the week for the MLB. They reached out to me because they saw saw me doing this for the twins and you know people within the MLB were reaching out to me being like you're becoming MLB legend and I'm like yeah. huh I'm <laughs> like what yeah I'm like you know big people like came came to me and said it said this really nice stuff and I'm like I'm just you know again it's just me and at the end of the day I'm like they're like no every everyone is hearing about you in the MLB of mm-hmm. what you're doing and I'm yeah. like really I'm just <laughs> goofing around to me give yourself you know? some so, credit because it is it's phenomenal yeah but again it's like that's something to kind of I don't know right before I die in my you know elderly bed you know like oh yeah I, I you know I, that was fun you know or yeah. yeah I guess I did do good work you know I, right now it's I have no time to think and again there's there's a lot of me that is like I didn't do I didn't I didn't you know I could do better you know, because mm-hmm. if I sure. start thinking realistically, if I start thinking like, oh, I'm I'm doing great, I'm pretty great, you know, it's it's done. Yeah. You know, great. because my my there's there's no growth in thinking like that. There's only mm-hmm. growth with being hard on yourself and wanting to do better, you know. Right. Does you it know, help? I, I, Sorry, I was gonna I, say, cause like looking at some of the paintings, you do have 
a great amount of detail in them, but also in some elements where you obviously don't because you are doing it in such a constricted yeah. time. I mean, talk about even just that process. Is it just that's more detailed than what you do remember early on? Or do you focus on those points, kind of some of the finer things? What are your thoughts there? And again, I think what makes your paintings so beautiful is some of the different, you know, you have some that are very yeah. detailed and some elements that yeah. are not. I mean, I think that's a signature of yours, but talk about that as a, a process. Yeah, it, it, I, I can see it kind of, you know, because when you look at reality and you look at what I do, when I see it that way, when I look at reality and I look at what I do, it's it's very vague and it's very, it, it's very uh, it's suggestive, I guess. And, and yeah. at the time when I'm doing it, it's frustrating because it's like, ah, you know, I want it to look better, but you're then, a perfectionist. The, like the next us. day. <laughs> yeah. Well, the next day I look at it and I'm like, ah, that's, that's kind of fun. You know, I, I see, you know, cause it, I see people like on doing sports stuff or whatever. Right. And, or I, you know, people go, Hey, I'm, I'm doing, I'm doing it too. You know, they're trying mm -hmm. to relate to me and it's just like, they're just looking at photos and tracing, you know, and, and or copying it exactly. And it's impressive, right, to be able to do that. But it's like you got apps on phones that can you just take photo <laughs> and you push the app and it does the same thing. And it's like, right. well, your job is now you're not needed. Yeah. You know, you got an app to do that. So I guess they could develop an app to do a goofy style like I do, right? <laughs> but um, again, it's just the time that I have kind of, um, you know, justifies or, or or you know the quality that I'm able to do and I'm trying to put stuff in there so I can make it look good right but at the end of the day it's a three second play you know right. and some of the stuff like with the bigger oil paintings that I'm doing in my studio and stuff those that that's the stuff that takes a lot of time and effort and thought you know and mm -hmm. because it's not in the moment. And I'm using these studies that I'm doing in the field um, to help create these, these moments that didn't happen within these giant oil paintings, right? And, and it's more about the art of it than it is about in the moment because you're stuck with this painting, you know, that's in your studio constantly, you know, making you feel, you know, because, there's nothing to go off of it, yeah. th at least this was like I saw it and I can document what I saw so okay. it's kind of a juggling act and it's it's I've shown a little little things that I've done like uh, there's a Capri Sop uh, portrait that I did in oil and a, um, a, uh, uh, a rise uh, from the twins uh, uh, portrait that I I did and you know that that's kind of like a step above what I'm doing here it's still kind of a study of them but it's more it took more time yeah to be able to get their likeness in a sense sure. so but it's always this 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 juggling act of making it look real or having it feel you know having it be in a sense what people say is a style right yeah. it's like right. you can identify the artist by how it looks you know mm -hmm. it doesn't need a signature as much as like oh that's Kickley or that's Picasso or that's Monet or that's whoever you know yeah and then there's everybody else after that that are trying to copy what somebody's doing and that's kind of what bugs me the most is seeing people you know I, I don't care if people paint sports or try and do the same thing mm -hmm. but it's like be you you know right. try and do what you are doing and you know, some people have said, oh, you know, you're the next Leroy Neiman. And Leroy <laughs> Neiman, I don't know if you know, if, if you don't know Back to the Future uh, 1, you might not know Le <laughs> who Leroy <laughs> Neiman is. But Leroy Neiman was probably the most famous uh, artist uh, that did that covered sports from, I, I would say, like the 50, uh, 60s uh, to maybe the 90s until he passed away, maybe early 2000s. Mm -hmm. But uh you know, he was in Rocky three and he did mm -hmm. some paintings for that. So he's kind of like pop. Rocky's another and, movie, Kirsten. That was pretty. Yeah. Popular. Rocky, Rocky three. Uh, <laughs> now you've got Kickley so. coming at me. Too. <laughs> 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 you started. Yeah. yeah. 
So, but you know, he was very popular. And again, I, I knew Leroy Neiman as a, a child because my brothers had posters of him and, you know, I yeah. saw his work on Sports Illustrated covers and whatnot. And, you know, I thought that stuff was cool. But the last thing I want to do is try and be Leroy Neiman because I respect what he did. Right. So I want to do what I'm going to do and I want to try and do something different, you know, and, and push it forward a little bit. You know, so I, I don't mind if people go, oh, you're the next Leroy Neiman. I, you know, I understand what they're saying, but um, I'm the first me too, right? right. It's just, I, uh, yeah. you know, I, I want to be me and, and I'm bumbling around trying to figure it out. And again, it's not until I'm done with life that it's like, that's what I, what I was. That's my body of work then. Because mm-hmm. it's a it's a constant evolution of thinking and you know working in the field and in in the studio and trying to figure out how to do all this stuff and it's frustrating because it's not it, you know I'm I always say I I'm trying to capture a ghost right I'm trying right. to trying to figure out what it is and there's no tangible thing of what a ghost is until it solidifies and you go mm-hmm. oh that's what it is but by the time you figure that out then it's not that it's boring, mm-hmm. but it's that same thing I was saying. Like, I want to keep leveling up. And if I stay at that same plateau of like, oh, okay, I figured out I can do this for the rest of my career, right? And that's what most people do, most artists or whatever. It's You get comfortable, you get money, and you just say, oh, okay, I can just ride this out because everybody wants, your, you know, commissions and whatever. And you can just, I don't care about any of that stuff. My goal is to see how far I can push this thing. Well, and, I, yeah. Yeah. And I have no idea where I will end up. And it's really weird. Like I said, when teams and places come at me and they're like, hey, we want you to do this. And it always sounds cool. It's just, you know, the things that I've done, you know, especially with the Vikings, they, it was, it was a good deal. You know, I've had other deals come at me and it's just like, no, they're, they're not good deals. <laughs> so it's like, I'm, you know, I'm a businessman back here as well mm-hmm. as an artist up here. So it's like, I'm not, I'm not a, a dummy, you know? Right. So it's just like, if you're going to come at me, you better have a good deal. Cause it's yep. like, I'm not doing it. I'm not giving away what I'm doing. No freebies free. guys. Yeah, yeah. no. <laughs> and I, But you know, at first I kind of had to it's like the whole twin season it was just like I was just doing it because again I, I I loved it you yeah, know right and cool stuff came out of it where like with the YouTube game of the week which that one I did nine paintings in game and you know and they had a camera on me the whole time and I had no clue like what was going to happen I would they stuck me in a camera well on the uh, right field follow pole line Mm -hmm. and I was in the sun the whole game and I'm like (laughs) I'm gonna die because it was so hot and you know I was sitting on cement which was reflecting back up and I'm like I'm gonna get burned I didn't bring sun sun or sunscreen or anything I just forgot and so they were like hey can you paint the play of the game and we'll present it to the player at the end well it was a tie game (laughs) <laughs> until the ninth and i'm like i know it's going to be a walk off i'm just like i'm hoping it's the twins because i don't want to give the brewers a painting sure and uh, uh miranda got up and yeah hit it out i had to do that thing in five minutes mm-hmm. and you know they were like come on give it to us give it to us i'm like nope nope it's not done yet Hold <laughs> you on. don't understand yeah <laughs> and i felt bad when i handed it over because i'm like ah dang it i forgot that he wore high socks that game and I gave oh, him okay. low, I gave him, you know, the, the pants over the top. And I'm like, yeah. shoot. And I felt really bad. Like, oh, people are going to notice that and be like, ah, you forgot it's high syrup, you know? So, yeah. But, but only you do, right? That's yeah. like with any of our yeah. passions and in, in, in art, that's only something that you know. But again, Kickley, love your work, love seeing you around, you guys. Be sure to go over, check out his social media pages, give him a like, let him know Bardown sent you. We got packs. Those are just, be- yeah. I might have to, I mean, I already follow you. Can I be entered? into this contest yeah, you can you enter know. yeah yeah you, you, you know, know. We'll, you know we'll come up you know i guess the rules is like i want to pack you know yeah say i want yeah. to pack and you know comment or like or share you know first you have to follow me right and right. like just don't follow me and so i didn't lose because i'll do i'll keep doing this right <laughs> like i haven't done it i was just talking the other day i was like you know 
I need to probably kind of do some cool stuff where I'm giving stuff away and interact yeah. with the crowd and stuff more on my social media. Yeah. Um, so it, it's just like this, this will be the first uh, trial. So if this goes over well, I'll, I'll keep doing it there and follow me, like my post, share it, take people, you know, I mean, the more do it that anyway. you do. Yeah, yeah the, the more that you stand out, I guess the more um, <laughs> the more chances you have of uh, getting a pack. So oh, yeah. well, it's something I... fans are definitely not going to want to miss out on. Those are awesome. I need I need to get me one of those too. Right? <laughs> those That's are what awesome. I'm saying. Kirsten well, the... and I are going to be battling it out. I think <laughs> there's cool stuff in the works. Okay, so there's yeah. there's stuff I can't talk about, cause, but I can tell you that the wild has approached me. So right. we're talking. And hopefully some really cool stuff will come out of that um, officially and uh, as well as throughout the NHL, uh, you know, mm-hmm. like other teams and other things I can't really say um, yeah. have reached out and the, we'll see this year from last year up until this point, you know, I guess, um, you know, full year will be next uh, uh, spring. Right. But yeah. um you know, a lot of people have reached out. So it's like, it'll be cool to see uh, things solidify and be able to announce like the Vikings field stuff, um, yeah. you know, but there's really weird, cool stuff of just like, oh, I would have never imagined. A to be know. continued. Yeah. yeah. So, it's awesome uh, stuff. You deserve it. Your stuff is awesome. Big Thank fan you. over here. Huge Appreciate fan. It. Thank you. We're so Thank excited you. that you were able to join us here on Bar My Down pleasure. Beauties. Look forward to seeing more of your work. You guys, we are going to take a quick break. We'll be right back. Thanks again to Kickley for joining us. Be sure you follow him on his social media channels. A chance to win some of those super great Minnesota Wild print packs. Love them. You're going to have to be cursing an eye out for that opportunity. Good luck to you for that. Uh, probably more collaborations coming with him because he does do such fantastic work. You could feel and hear the passion from him as he was speaking about this. So I'm glad it's an avenue that is truly working out for him. Uh, before we wrap here, up for debate as always, which we kind of dove into very heavily in our first segment, but we'll carry on here. Uh, the up for debate was what is the largest problem that the Minnesota Wild had during that early losing streak? Was it the offense? Was it the defense? Or was it the goaltending? Kirsten, what did you pick? Defense. I, I have major concerns about the defense. And I think, I mean, goaltending, there has been faults strictly on the goaltending. But I would say a lot of the problems goaltending has had have also transpired from the defense. I don't know what the fix is, um, but they need to figure it out. And they need to figure it out quick. I'm I'm concerned about the defense, truly. I would say it's the defense, too. I know people are quick to point to the goaltending, but similar. See, at least I'm consistent because I said a couple times last year it wasn't poor goaltending. It was poor defense. Like there were times when those guys are left to, out to dry. Um, and I think that's what you saw. I mean. I hate to put on blast Matt Dumba because I know he's always getting hard time, but, and I thought Jonas Brodeen has looked off as well. Um, but yeah, so defense without question, I think a lot of people lean toward goaltending and goaltending is the easy thing to blame. And yes, there are concerns there, but uh, my problem would be the defense, but hopefully those problems are problems of the past. We're looking ahead, moving forward. Minnesota wild are on the road. We'll still continue with our buttes previews and breakdowns while they are so be sure to check those out as always we want to give a shout out to soda stick soda stick.com uh use code bar down beauties for 15 percent off all your purchases excuse me let me catch it up here i'm talking too fast guys uh shout out to green belt our li- next live show this week wednesday seven to eight at dukes in oakdale come hang out come say hi we might be having a special guest pop by but we won't you won't know unless you're there so come see for yourself so shout out to green belt as well talk north for featuring us on their lovely network and royal credit union let's be more free as always share rate subscribe like all the good stuff we appreciate you each and every week tuning in uh until next week we'll see you later have a good one